Hi, Great Tens, and welcome to the last session of the Winter School. Now, I began this series of lessons by looking at chemistry from everyday life within an African context. And the point was to show that chemistry has been around for a long time. It's been part of our cultures for a long time. And it's taken hundreds of years for it to develop into the science that it is. So I, today I just want to look briefly at the history of chemistry. Um, then I'm going to just give you a worksheet that talks about the fiery beginnings of chemistry and alchemy to complete. So, I mean, firstly, it's important to realize that uh, the metals have been around for a long time and uh, people were able to separate them like copper and bronze and gold and silver and each was associated or configured with a heavenly body. Democritus was the first one to explain that matter was probably made up of atoms, but because Aristotle was more well known, his idea that matter was made of four elements, air, earth, water and fire, uh, was believed for a long time. Um, so, one of the, the big things was the, the failure of the, or the advent of alchemists, where alchemists believed that they could turn things into gold. Um, and they tried to get gold from other things. So alchemy was steamed in mysticism and um, lots of incorrect science, no scientific ideas, although a lot of the things that came from the alchemists, such as hydrochloric acid, were based on their work. So even though they weren't focusing on understanding what chemistry was, but rather trying to turn things into gold, a lot of chemistry came out of that. Eventually, in about the early 17th century, alchemy was, um, the, as a, you'll see in the, the reading, books were burnt and so on. Now, for a long time, people did not understand how things burn. So there was a theory called the folly Gaston theory. Basically, it said that something that burns has folly Gaston in it, and that is released when something is burnt. Now, uh, Lavoisier was the first one to disprove that. He showed that when you burn certain things in air, their mass actually increases because they combine with oxygen. So he discovered oxygen. And it took a long time before the Fologoston theory was disproved. And then Dalton's atomic theory came into being. And so science just started growing from there with the development of x-rays and the electronic properties of matter, finding out the mass of the electron, different types of radioactivity, then the proton was discovered in 1914, then the neutron was discovered later. Um, and so there's been a huge growth in chemistry. And we now know that in terms to understand chemistry, it's important to be able to explain things at the atomic level. As you saw with balancing chemical equations, the conservation of mass is key, and it's because of the rearrangement of particles. Now, just to show you that the origins of chemistry are not only from Western Europe, here is a video that explains how um, from Arabia chemistry grew, and many of the processes that we know today are still used. So chemistry is not from one culture. It's a combination of many cultures coming together. A brief history of chemistry. Did you know materials such as plastic, synthetic rubber, sulfuric acid and medicines like our favorite antibiotic penicillin all originate from the chemical industry of early Muslims who were chemistry revolutionaries. In fact, the word chemistry in Arabic is chemia with al as the definite article. Thus, alchemia meaning the chemistry or alchemy in Old English. Today, we will discuss who made early discoveries in chemistry, what they were, and how they are contributing towards our modern society today. The father of chemistry. Can you guess who he is? Yes, he is Jabir ibn Hayyan, or Jibba, as known by the West, was son of a druggist. He lived from 722 AD to approximately 815 AD. He spent most of his time in Kufa in Iraq and scientifically systemized chemistry. He devised and perfected many chemical processes like distillation, liquefaction, crystallization, 
sublimation, amalgamation, and filtration. Most of these processes are still used the same way today, his most famous being his distillation process. The glassware he used were also designed by him, most of which are still shaped the same way. He also built a precise scale, which weighed items 6,480 times smaller than a kilogram, or 2.2 pounds. Jabir ibn Hayyan was also aware of atoms and compounds and how they combine to form bonds. He also attempted to make paper that cannot burn, and ink that can allow us to read in the dark. His fascinating works were included in the Great Book of Chemical Properties, The Way and Measures the chemical combination, and the dyes. The great work of his was all done in his laboratory in Kufa and was rediscovered during demolition of some houses in the area of Damascus Gate. Al-Razi's Book of Secrets Muhammad ibn Zakaria al-Razi was known in the West by Razis, who lived in Iran from 864 to 925 AD. He is famous for writing books like The Book of Secrets, and the Book of Secret of the Secrets. He is most famous for the classification of natural and artificial substances, giving birth to the modern day periodic table that we all know of. One of his most interesting research was on waterproofing fabrics and making hair dyes. He also designed, described, and used more than 20 laboratory instruments, many of which are still in use, such as crucible, cucurbit, or retort for distillation. Al-Kindi Al-Kindi lived from 801 to 873 AD in Iraq. He is most famous for writing a book on the chemistry of perfumes. The book contained 107 recipes for different scents, 